Hello again, this is Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher, and this is episode number 21 of my short subject series, and it's entitled The World's Most Accurate Height Gauge. You know I'm a big fan of doing my layout with height gauges, but I'm going to take it just one step farther with this video, so let's get started. Look what I have here on the bench. There are four different height gauges. You've probably seen me use all of these, but in general they have accuracy of one thousandth, not one tenth of a thousandth like what I'm going to show you here presently. But these are very easy to set up for different measurements. You can do it in a matter of seconds. The world's most accurate height gauge takes much longer. Now also on the bench here I have a set of gauge blocks made by Fowler and there's 81 pieces in that set. There are larger and smaller sets sometimes called Joe blocks because the inventor of gauge blocks was Carl Johansson of Sweden and that was about 100 years ago. I'm going to talk more about that and his relationship with Henry Ford here in a few minutes, but I do want to keep this short. But over on the other side here, I have a genuine Johansson accessory set that can be used with any brand of gauge blocks. These were made in 1942, so they're 80 years old. They were made just before I was born and they came from the great West Clocks factory where my wife labored many years ago. So this is what I'm going to talk about and we will set that up with gauge blocks, sometimes called Joe blocks. If you have a set of Joe blocks and you have one of these books here, it is possible to set up more than 120,000 different size gauges in steps of one-tenth of a thousandth. Also I'd like to say that these are made in four different uh, degrees of accuracy. This is what's called a shop grade, but they are more accurate than we can possibly do in any basement shop. But there are other more accurate laboratory sets, and I will put just a real brief picture of uh, Pratt & Whitney take on that at the end of the video. You don't really need to know that, but if you'd like to have a little extra credit, check that out. So there are pages and pages and pages in this Dual book, Dual made gauge blocks also, of how to stack the gauges to give yourself different uh, dimensions for your gauges. Again, that's probably a little bit beyond most of us. So in this nice wooden fitted box here, we have several items. We're not going to talk about these, but this is the scriber, and I don't think it's ever been used. I removed the packing grease just a few minutes ago. Notice that it says Carl Johansson and the word Ford in script, because Ford owned this company for a while before they sold it out to Brown and Sharp. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But here is the base for the height gauge. Very heavy, very accurate. It's been lapped. There's a spring in here that will allow you to hold the stacking block right here, which I'll talk more about in just a second also. It says Ford on there. But one thing you need to note here is that there's a number stamped on there, one point 375, that's one and three eighths of an inch. In other words, what I'm telling you here is that the very lowest that you can get the scriber to your surface plate is one and three eighths of an inch. So that is a bit of a compromise and it may be troublesome, especially for me because most of my layout work is done in uh, small sizes close to the surface plate. So this would have probably limited use. Very, very heavy tool seal ground and lap. Okay, you can see that these gauge block holders are made in different sizes. The one that we're going to use here will hold up to four inches of blocks. And you do not necessarily need to ring your blocks because this will clamp them together nice and tight. So this is four inches, this is three, and these are about one and a half, and they probably make many, many other sizes. But what I do not like about these is in order to make your adjustment, you have to screw 
the screw with a little knurl knob that may take some time but with this one there are a couple little knurled I'm not sure what you call them but you can squeeze that and very quickly make your rapid adjustment so what I'm going to do right now is to clamp a, simply a one inch block in there we're going to make this as simple as possible so here's how to set it up as a height gauge you notice that there's a spring in here and that's held by that screw so I will take this and just press it in there like that and then if I can find the one inch block be sure and wipe everything I've already cleaned the holder and that will go in like that and then the scriber what a nice finish. Thank you, Carl. Bring that down. And we tighten it. So this is now set at one inch plus one and three eighths. So it's two and three eighths total. Now the accuracy of what you do in your layout depends on, to a great degree not only on your skill but on the cleanliness. So you must wipe everything thoroughly. I've even used the Dual Clean Surf on the granite surface plate. And I'll repeat that we need to wipe over and over everything. Do that continuously. Again this is set for what? Let me write that down real quickly. Okay, I've taken the liberty of writing that down. It'll wipe right off. You're not hurting a thing so that you know what your setup is here because if you're using this type of gauge you can read it very quickly and you know what the setting is. And now with this piece of brass held on an angle plate here I'm simply going to scribe it as a nice sharp scriber. So we have an accurate line, uh, 2.375 inches up from the granite surface plate. Absolutely about as accurate as you can possibly get it, other than using a higher grade of Joe blocks. What do you think? Well, that's as far as I'm going to carry it, but I'm going to give you a little extra credit right now in regards to the history of Carl Johansson and Ford and Brown and Sharp. It won't take long. If you're interested, stand by. Otherwise, this is Mr. Pete saying so long and I'll see you next time. I have a lot of oddball gauges around the shop that just came in a job lot, but they're always marked, usually with the manufacturer. This is a dual gauge and it's 900,000. Notice what poor condition it's in. It wasn't stored properly over the years and basically should be thrown away but as far as just using around the shop for rough work it's still pretty darn good. Okay here's a brief history on the Johansson company. Carl Johansson or Johansson probably was born in Sweden so his original company here was in Sweden and he patented these he made the first one on his wife's sewing machine, believe it or not. But here is a later trademark. It just says CEJ also in Sweden. Notice the beautiful logo there. But about 1920, Henry Ford wanted to do a little bit more accurate work. And he hired Carl to come to this country and work for him. And it Ultimately, Ford bought him out, and then Carl worked for Ford for many years and made, I think, 21 different trips across the Atlantic over the years. But ultimately, in the 40s or 50s, I'm not sure which, Brown and Sharp bought out Johansson. And I'm not sure if they still have that trademark, but Brown and Sharp went kaput too, so possibly they still make these over in Italy. I'm not sure. You will notice that Sterrett makes them under the Weber name. They also bought out a company. That's their way of getting into new technology. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little extra credit here about Carl Johansson and his company. 
he was a genius, as was Henry Ford. Well, that concludes this video. This is Mr. Peach saying so long until next time.